is Addie Gunning and I can feel the excitement bubbling up inside because I'm in my kitchen and my not so discreetly placed sewing machine here means that we are doing a thrift flip today. I am so excited uh, per usual with all of my videos but especially with thrift flips. I love getting to change old pieces into new pieces adding my own flair and style and thrift flips are the best way to do that. So this is a little series that I love to do on my channel. It's probably my favorite kind of video that I put out because I get to update all of these old pieces and bring new life into other pieces that otherwise I don't think anyone would wear because they're not the cutest things on the planet, but we are turning them into some of the cutest pieces in my closet. I have absolutely no plans for this one today. I am really just picking some things that I've wanted to do for a while because y'all actually give me the motivation to finish these pieces. If I didn't do these in video form, I'm pretty sure that I would just like finish half of a piece and not want to finish it at all. So thank Thank you for giving me the motivation to do these thrift flips. I am challenging myself today because I am doing some new things. So I said that my last thrift flip was my most challenging one and it definitely was because that check set was just a monster to create but is one of my favorite pieces. So hopefully we'll be able to get some new favorite pieces in my closet with this thrift flip. So without further ado and without making my sewing machine wait, let's get started with this thrift flip. <laughs> One is this adorable nightgown that I fell in love with oh, so quickly. It is gorgeous floral print. I've worn it around my house a couple of times and I've worn it out a couple of times too, but every time I do, I just feel like I'm wearing a nightgown and while nothing's wrong with wearing a nightgown out, I wanted to update it a little bit so I would feel less nightgowny. So my inspiration for this piece are just these adorable, crazy printed sets. 60s prints are so in right now and the big crazy floral on this I think is so perfect for spring and summer and so I want to bring it into spring and summer a little bit more. It has these adorable buttons down the back, the adorable ruffles throughout the whole thing on the sleeve and the shoulder down the back and these amazing ones on the bottom. I could not pass this up because of all of the fun details on it, but I knew that I would want to tweak it at some point, but just never got around to it because it was cute enough to wear on its own anyway. My thoughts for this bad boy are shortening the sleeves. The hem's a little long, so we're going to shorten that. We're going to make it into a little two-piece with elastic, I think. So we are going to be making a huge statement in this piece right here. Really excited to do this. This is piece number one and we're going to get started. We are starting off strong here today by a pile of pins and figuring out where we want that waist to hit. So we're going to pin it across the front section and then I'm going to go ahead and do the sleeve pin too for the length of the sleeve. So I'm laying it flat and then I have to make sure it's very flat because of all these amazing pleats. I'm pulling my pin to the edge, lipping it again so I can cut it in a straight line across the front. It's going to be a very cropped, adorable little elastic shirt. So to make the little casing for the elastic, start by zigzag stitching the edge. This kind of works when you don't have a serger. Well, it definitely works when you don't have a serger. It's the best way to do it. And it keeps your edges from fraying. I am going to be double rolling this, but I still like to have a nice casing. So here in the hand close up, you can see the zigzag stitch. I'm folding that zigzag over to make an actual hem so that once we fold it into the casing, it won't have all those frayed edges everywhere. This is one of many bird's nests that I had to pull out on this dress because this machine did not like the fabric. But we finished that, did a little dance, and went right back to I have put this on over my dress because yes, I am that lazy right now. This is quarantine lazy. So <laughs> now I'm going to measure kind of where I want it to be. So the elastic is about an inch thick. So I'm going to flip it under about an inch and a half to allow for a seam allowance and then see where it hits on me because that's where I want my waist to be. Thankfully, it is the correct length. So we're going to get to sew in this part now. So here is where that actual elastic casing comes into play. So I'm laying my piece flat and measuring how big the elastic is. It's about an inch. So 
So I like to do about an inch and a quarter up from my hem just to give it some seam allowance. So fast motion, I am pinning this whole shirt. And then sewing down that whole edge, you can see I have my big a quarter and an inch space. I am not sewing it completely shut though so that I can do exactly what I'm doing in this shot. I am putting the piece of elastic through the hole with a safety pin. It's the easiest way to do this if you don't have any of the special tools. It gives you something stable to hold onto while you're trying to stretch that elastic around. And once all the tugging and stretching is done, we have our elastic that is coming out on the other side quite reluctantly. And I use my teeth as tools, so here I am biting and pulling just to make sure that it sits flat. I always make sure that my elastic is sitting flat because if it's twisted in there, then it's gonna make your shirt look weird and the hem is not going to bubble correctly. And then I laid the pieces one on top of the other in order to sew it, which I'm using an X stitch and then double stitching the sides of it, as you can see right here. Closing up that hem that we left open for the elastic. And look how cute it is right now. Oh my gosh, I love it. So I'm buttoning up the back because I'm gonna have to cut this sleeve. And if I didn't button the back, it would make the sleeves an awkward length because I could cut it wrong. So in order to get it flat, I'm buttoning that. And then I'm cutting, folding over because we know we have to do that in order to get a straight line on both. And then I am sewing it the same way that I did the other hem, but I am not double rolling this one. So I'm doing my zigzag stitch first. Then I'm doing my flat stitch all the way around with it folded so the pieces won't fray, but it also won't have that bulky hem. It'll have a little bit more movement. So our top is done, but I'm going to keep it a little bit of a mystery. So we're gonna move on to this skirt, which I am again laying flat, then folding in half to cut across the straight line. So we already cut where I wanted it before, but I'm cutting it in a straighter line. And then I realized that I'm gonna want this skirt a little bit shorter than it was before. So I cut off about three inches and doing the zigzag stitch. You're gonna hear that a lot in this video. But <laughs> I had to stitch up the one pocket that was so awkward on this skirt. because there was only one pocket on one side. So once I got that cut off, I did the same thing as my elastic hem on the skirt, but this one is for a waistband. Same thickness, same depth, and I'm pinning it all the way around to keep it flat while I sew it. And sew it and sew it some more because there was a lot of fabric in this and it took a long time to do these hems. Once that was done, I fitted it to myself because I didn't want it to be a very bunchy skirt. I still wanted it to have a pretty straight waistline. I took in about four inches, but I took two inches from both sides so that it would still have the same kind of shape. Mistake number one for pinning this skirt was pinning it on the outside instead of on the inside because we're not gonna sew on the outside. So here I am struggling to flip it back inside out and pin it again. I took it in starting at two inches from the top all the way down to the edge before I got to the ruffle. Mistake number two occurred where I realized when I sewed that whole edge down I forgot to leave a space for my elastic to go through so it would no longer be one straight piece of elastic around the whole skirt. It would have to be two separate ones attached at the hips. I made so much extra work for myself but I was not about to take it apart and try to do a whole new waistband so here I am just pulling one piece of elastic through and then sewing it to the edge of the waistband at the the back and the front. And the final product was well worth the mistakes. Oh my gosh, I am obsessed with how this one turned out. It just makes me want to dance. How cropped the shirt is, because I went a little higher than I normally would. And then the elastic makes it so comfy. And this fabric is everything. So let's keep going. I have a sewing bug. Piece number two is another adorable, crazy pattern. It is already a two-piece, gorgeous slip dress. Got a nice flow to it, a little overlay fabric. It has a very 90s unfinished crinkle hem. I don't know what it's called, but I think it's adorable. And then the elastic straps kind of cracked me up because I don't know why you would need elastic straps, but we're just going for it with this one. It also has this little overlay shirt on the top of it. So we are going to do something I have never done with this before. My idea for today is to take apart the entire shirt and make an amazing puffy sleeve fitted gorgeous slip dress. This is kind of my inspiration for this dress. I think the puff sleeves are so beautiful and I think with this button down we'll have enough fabric but I am so excited because this pattern is so cute and I think if we adjust the waist a little bit and really get those puff sleeves gorgeous they'll be sheer and the perfect spring dress. I am really excited to do this one and let's get started. 
get ready because this is a wild ride of a sewing project. So I started with the piece on and didn't really think about the fact that it's two separate pieces since it's lining and a sheer overlay. So I started pinning with so much confidence. And so once I had it all pinned and then started to sew a seam, realized that I would need to take the whole thing apart after sewing that seam. I had to seam rip that and tear the whole thing apart and it was just one big mess. But it's fine, we got over it and we are now cutting this thing to pieces to get out our angst. I wanted to keep the same general shape of the slip while I was cutting it and so I tried to keep with the line of this dress. But I essentially just wanted all the pieces separate and would basically rebuild them back together again. The demolition is complete. I took a dress that fits me really well and laid it over the top so I would know what shape I was going for to rebuild this slip. Laid it flat and pinned all the way down the side to match that shape so I could cut it. And once I cut it, I pinned all the way up the side where my seam was going to be so we can start sewing this dress. Little fun fact here, this fabric is extremely stretchy and extremely stretchy fabric is extremely difficult to sew. <laughs> so I had my own little issues trying to get this thing going, but once I did, it was great. I sewed one side and then the other side, cut off the excess fabric so it wouldn't give me a weird bulky thing. And then I used the slip as a template for the overlay so that they would end up matching up once I put the pieces back together. And thus began the difficult task of trying to figure out how these pieces were supposed to go back together. It took me so long to figure out front to back and back to whatever and all this stuff. So after my confused little moment of wondering how to put it together, I finally put it together. And here I am trying it on with a very rough neckline to make sure that all the seams that needed to match up were matching up, pinning the neckline back together so that I can sew it together. This is the inside of the outside slip and the outside of the inside slip that I'm sewing together. Yes, it's very confusing, but it worked out perfectly. To sew on the straps, I left two little pockets at the top points of the neckline. To hide the straps well, I pushed them through that hole, sewed that together with a couple of stitches across, and here I'm trying it on backwards because that is how I do my back strap. Sewing those pieces down. This is the dress and it is now fitted and I think looks so good already. I don't feel like a box, which I think is gonna be so good for a base on our puffy sleeve. I am now taking this shirt and we're gonna make some puff sleeves. To begin this part of the demolition, I am cutting off the sleeves and the sides, I'm cutting up the sides, and then I'm cutting the button placket off of the front. Yes, I learned what that's called. Thank you to my YouTube subscribers. Then I'm sewing up the middle of the front where the buttons were before, so we'll have one large piece of fabric. After I get that front sewed back up, I am taking both of the pieces, folding them over and laying them on top of each other, and taking this little piece of a t-shirt sleeve that I chopped off of my husband's t-shirt, sorry Peter, and using it as a template to cut the sleeve opening. So you can see I have some extra extra fabric about two inches on top of the sleeve. That's the part that's gonna gather to make that puff. I'm sewing the two sides of the sleeve together so it creates a tube, cutting off the excess fabric so the length of the sleeve is correct. We're making another elastic casing on this so the sleeve will be extra puffy. And then you all know the drill, we're gonna zigzag stitch and straight strip, strip, bleh, bleh, straight stitch after we fold the piece over to make that. And then we are tugging our elastic through to make it puffy. Once that's done, I am gonna go up to the shoulder and start my gather. I'm starting about two inches from the armpit seam and I'm gonna stitch on a long seam stitch so I can go back and pull that thread and it will gather the sleeve like this. You can see here I left the bottom flat so I can attach it to the armpit without gather. Now comes the most difficult task I think I've ever done of attaching a puffy sleeve on thin sheer fabric to a very thick elastic strap, trying not to stretch it and making sure it will still fit. The chest was looking a little saggy and so I'm doing a little back and forth stitch so I can make a cute little ruche at the top so it has a little heart vintagey neckline. And voila, the finished product. How good did this dress turn out? It was, oh my gosh, like six or seven hours worth of just crazy and taking it apart and putting it back together, but it looks amazing now. I am obsessed with these sleeves. They're not as puffy as I wanted them to be, but we kind of pivoted, gathered some, and I think they turned out very cute and still look so adorable with the long line hem of this. To open it up a little bit, I added this little ruching effect right here with some hand sewing to give it a better neckline. The longer sleeve, I wanted more skin up here. The back might be my favorite part of this. It just has this adorable square back. It turned out so good, and I'm so glad that I can finally wear it in a way that I love. On to the next piece. This next 
piece is terrifying to me, honestly. I'm a little scared to get started on it, so I'll just show it to you first. It is this adorable orange set. It's a suit set, and so it has this oversized blazer and then a midi skirt, and so it's definitely supposed to be like a work suit situation, and I love the color, and the fabric is very soft and has some good movement to it, but my idea for this one and why it scares me so much is to make these adorable little short sleeves skirt sets so I have to crop the blazer mess with the sleeves take in the blazer because the shoulder pads are massive on this thing I'm gonna have to basically pare down the whole blazer and move up the buttons so that when I crop it it doesn't lose all of the buttons on it because that would be kind of awkward and then the skirt I'm just gonna crop and take in a little bit so the skirts not gonna be too hard but it's this blazer that is just kind of difficult to work with I'm really excited how this sets gonna turn out it's still that nod to the suit set that I think is so cute but still doing it in a very cool way and this has been sitting in my closet for about a year now because I knew it would be a big undertaking so today we are going to be taking it under and doing it finally <laughs> but I cannot wait to see what we can do with this so let's get started we're starting this one out with a pretty simple hem, so I'm pinning where I want the hem to hit, chopping off about three inches below where I put my pin so I have enough seam allowance, and then zigzag stitching, of course, and double rolling a hem. Oh my gosh, how cute is this skirt? It's so cute and flirty now. Cannot wait to see how this shirt comes out, so let's keep on sewing. Buckle up, this is another doozy. So we're chopping off the sleeves and trying to cut through these giant shoulder pads, and it did not work. So I just cut the lining and ripped them out. What a classy look with the chopped off sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm pinning where the shoulder actually hits me and then I'm gonna pin down the sides to make it fit I'm chopping off from the shoulder pin down to the side pin so that I know where my new armhole is gonna be This is extremely important for a good fit of a shirt then chopping it down the sides and going ahead and cropping it So I won't have to cut through the thick fabric of the pockets We always fold over to check our hem chop off the excess from the shoulder and the side and then pinning it nice and flat Because there's a lot of layers of fabric with the lining and the blazer fabric I'm then sewing up where I pinned it up the side seam and trying Trying it on to flip the crop under so I know where to hem it. Moving on to sleeves. So since I cut down the sleeve hole, I also have to cut down the armhole on the sleeve, which I'm then pinning down from the bottom all the way around to make sure that it fits correctly, and then reattaching to the shirt. I attach the other one to the other side, flip them right side out, and we are well on our way to having a cute little shirt. I am removing the button because I wanted to have three buttons, but I also need to hem it, and I'm chopping off quite a bit of fabric. There was so much here, and it took me a very long time. And I'm not gonna lie, I got a hand cramp. After after giving it a good pat down for no reason at all, I started to do my zigzag stitch, pinned it all down, and now I'm doing a straight stitch for the double roll. Moving back to the sleeves for final details, I am cutting them off, matching them up to cut the other one off, and getting my zigzag stitch right back on because we will never stop. Folding it over, straight stitching it one time around for that oh so good sleeve movement, and we are in the final details. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. So I am using my button presser foot. It's a whole process that I had to watch another video for, and I already did my buttons but I'm gonna show you on a scrap piece of fabric and I honestly think this thing is the coolest little piece of machinery on the planet look at it go it makes a buttonhole so cool so you just have to seam rip it and then sew your buttons on the other side of your fabric and I'm done How cute. This one might be my favorite from this whole video. It turned out exactly like I was hoping it would, which I mean happens pretty often, but not this good. Oh gosh, just the cropped jacket shirt and this little mini skirt is so adorable and I cannot believe that it turned out perfectly and I was so afraid of it. What a good little change up. That is all the thrift flips that I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know which thrift flip was your favorite down below. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. You are well loved. Bye.